last group is uh, Target Future. And this group of talented students has been involved uh, with designing innovative solutions to deter gun violence and build prosperous communities. Please welcome Target Future. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. My name is Carl Jancy. I'm a senior at Riverside Brookfield High School just outside the Chicagoland area. I'd like to introduce my team members from Target Future. Hi, my name is Joshua Woodard. I'm a junior at Whitney Young. My name is Adam Gluckert. I'm a junior at Lane Tech College Prep. December 28th, 2012, the 500th homicide was recorded in the Chicagoland area. His name was Nathaniel Jackson. He was shot in the back of the head while exiting a convenience store near his home. 2012 marks the year that is the second highest in homicides, just behind 2008, which held a record 512 homicides. Um, so I think as Chicagoans, we have this misconception that gun violence is just a neighborhood area on like the west side or south side. But um, we created this map to emphasize the fact that gun violence can affect all of us. The red boxes represent areas where there is um, a high occurrence of um, gun violence related incidents. And the yellow areas are like those outside neighborhoods. So you can see it's affecting from North Rogers Park all the way down to Inglewood and the west side as well. So um, our project description, our aim <laughs> in three words is to, ins well, two words, is to inspire and connect. Um, we wanted to motivate high school students to take action themselves. Um, as, a, as a youth, a Chicago youth, I feel that um, our voice is underrepresented uh, when it comes to dealing with this issue of gun violence. Like officials try to, t try to solve it with their own means without talking to the community and getting the voices of people who actually know this, experience, this problem firsthand. So we wanted to bridge that gap and that's what this program aimed to do. Um, our group held a summit, um, which we kind of focused on trying to bring together um, students that actually had first-hand experiences with gun violence and have them bring in uh, their stories for professionals in fields that um, could make a difference. And we did this through um, the design thinking process. So we had them kind of uh, enter the minds of either a victim or a shooter and kind of talk about what they thought these people were thinking um, and what they weren't telling people and what they were telling people. So we kind of gave them that kind of like um, personal feel of both sides of the um, spectrum. Um, one moment. Uh, I would like to mention that, um, so for the officials that we did get to attend our event, we had a professor from Northeastern University, um, a Marine, an ex-gang member who was reformed and who was now running community programs, four graduate students, and the alderman, Pat Dowell. Okay, continue. Thank you, Josh. All right, so at the summit, which we held at the IIT Idea Workshop, we divided into groups of four. My team worked hard in developing a self-sufficient community idea. One of our ideas was to provide employment, improve the environment in which the residents live in, and bring together community members so they can work together. You can do this through community gardens, which is an idea that was fostered at the IIT Boeing Scholars Academy. By taking advantage of vacant lots, you can then teach gardening and have the residents grow the produce, sell it at a farmer's market, or use it at home as they wish. Another idea my group worked with was a low-cost carpooling system. What I learned that day is that a lot of students that are affected by gun violence are affected on their way from home to school or from home to work. So by providing a safe passage to these places, it would reduce crime. My group understood the importance of the neighborhood economy and how a prosperous community can lead to lower crime rates. Thank you. Um, my team uh, dealt with media correction, and we saw, my group saw that the fairness between, or in the media um, of kind of going over certain aspects of gun violence was not 
as we said, as we saw, fair. Um, so what we wanted to do was uh, kind of uh, grow this grow this span of media coverage and not just focus it on one or two people. So we came up, my group came up with um, a memorial for gun violence with the names of all victims, not just a select few. So we could kind of get this idea of a, a larger impact than the media portrays. Um, so my group dealt with this idea of humanization, of the idea that the media, the way the media portrays deaths of victims um, dehumanizes us and desensitizes us to like the fact that these were actual people with actual lives and actual families who were trying to do something before they were shot in the horrible way they were. So um, to combat this, my team brainstormed up a monthly reflection. It would act. It would be a website that people could visit, and it would it would counteract this media effect. It would allow us a glimpse into their lives and would hopefully deter um, the instinct. I guess some of these gang members can have to just pull a trigger, not feel remorse for what they're doing. Um, another idea they came up with was the government compensation for putting food markets in these affected communities that, um, that also happen to be food deserts. So this would be taking those children off the streets and employing them and also injecting money into the communities. Um, one of our other um, uh, program um, uh, students was Brian, he's not with us today, but um, what his uh, group came up with was something called Create Teens, uh, where students from around the Chicagoland area come together um, and have kind of like an AA kind of type group discussion where they kind of share stories and bridge the gap between the lack of communication in communities. Um, this would be run through the Park District and uh, would have um, speakers come in such as um, gang veterans, ex-convicts come in and kind of give these students the longer, um, the bigger impact of what their actions in the present moment or what they think is the most important actually has on in the future. We would like to thank uh, Maria Spahn, Connie Ma, Jerry Doyle, and Jeremy Alexis who all contributed to our program and without them it wouldn't have been made possible. Thank you.